Welcome to John Recap. Get ready for a roller coaster of thrilling recaps. Today, I'm gonna recap ninth season of 2018 American horror series called The Walking Dead. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all the latest. The previous seasons of the series are available in a pinned comment below the video. Let's kick off this party without wasting any more time. It's been a year and a half since Rick beat Megan. The communities of Alexandria, the hilltop, the kingdom, Oceanside, and the sanctuary rebuilt what they could to make better society. Rick and Mishan are raising Judith and overseeing Alexandria. Daryl and Eugene handle the remaining saviors at the sanctuary, where growing anything is tough due to bad soil. Maggie had her and Glenn's baby, Herschel, and won the election to lead the hilltop, but she's still upset about Rick sparing Negan. Carol and Ezekiel at the kingdom are going strong as a couple. Rick leads a crew into the ruins of DC to salvage vital supplies from a museum, plows, canoes, seed samples, and a covered wagon. But crossing a fragile glass floor teeming with walkers proves tricky. Ezekiel falls through, but they're tied together and get him out with Carol's help. They head back to the communities with their loot. They discover that a recent rainstorm flooded the river and wrecked a bridge on the way to the hilltop. Rick suggests going to Alexandria and waiting it out, but Maggie wants to return to her child. She lets Rick's crew take the supplies to Alexandria. They continue, but the wagon gets stuck in the mud. With walkers closing in, they abandon the supplies for now. Ken tries to free the horses but gets bitten. Despite amputation and immediate care, he doesn't make it. Later, Maggie talks to Ken's angry parents, Tammy and Earl Rose, who feel their son died in vain since the supplies will go to the savior. They hold a funeral for Ken, with Gregory overseeing it. Rick, Daryl, and Michon bring supplies back to the sanctuary. Daryl spots Negan loyalist graffiti on the wall. He tells Rick he's done leading the sanctuary and prefers smaller, trustworthy groups. Carol talks to Daryl privately and offers to take over the sanctuary, concerned about Ezekiel's marriage proposal. Inspired by a museum display and Negan's name on the wall, Michon suggests a charter to establish new laws. At the hilltop, Gregory and Earl discuss the disputed election over drinks, expressing anger. Gregory informs Maggie that Glenn's grave has been defaced. When she investigates, a hooded man attacks her, but Enid and others save her, revealing the attacker as Earl. Maggie confronts Gregory, who admits his involvement and mocks her for not seeking Alexandria's help due to Negan's imprisonment. Gregory tries to kill Maggie but she overpowers him. The next day, Rick and Michonne visit the hilltop and Rick asks Maggie for supplies and assistance with the bridge repair. Maggie insists that the sanctuary provides most of the workforce in exchange for supplies. She declares she no longer follows Rick's lead. Before leaving, Maggie has Gregory hanged while Rick and Michonne watch in horror. Rick updates someone off-screen about the community's progress in rebuilding the bridge. He oversees the camp where his allies watch over the saviors rebuilding the bridge. Eugene informs him about some saviors who walked off and their plans to clear a roadblock and redirect walkers with siren. Rick notices Enid being trained as a medic by Siddick and sends Siddick back to safety. Nishan visits the hilltop to talk to Maggie. She knows the hilltop was supposed to get ethanol from the sanctuary in exchange for food for the saviors, but the ethanol is missing. Nishan asks Maggie to provide the food on trust. Maggie refuses, mentioning the lack of fuel for their tractor and the inability to repair the plow without Earl, the blacksmith who's in custody. Michonne urges Maggie to reconsider, but Maggie insists on punishing Earl. While working on the bridge, Justin, a savior, tries to take more than his share of water and pushes Henry. Daryl steps in to control the situation before Rick can intervene. Rick and Daryl realize the saviors are becoming unruly due to the rush to finish the bridge and the lack of food. They detonate dynamite to divert a walker horde with sirens. However, the second siren, operated by Justin, fails. Rick realizes a group of men at a nearby logging site is in danger. Daryl sees the horde and orders everyone to run, but Aaron's arm gets crushed. Rick and the others defend them, allowing Daryl to rush Aaron to the medical tent. Enid determines that amputating Aaron's arm is the only option. The surgery goes well, but Daryl blames himself. He confronts Justin, who claims the radio equipment failed, but Daryl doesn't buy it and beats him. Later, Rick kicks Justin out of the camp. Maggie eventually allows Tammy to see Earl and discovers that Gregory influenced Earl's actions by giving him alcohol. After some time, Maggie allows Earl to return to his blacksmith work with supervision. She agrees to provide food to Mishan and discusses a code of laws among the communities as long as she maintains authority at Hilltop. Meanwhile, Anne and Gabriel develop a connection at the worksite and Carol and Ezekiel discuss their relationship. Later that night, Rick's conversation carries on, but it's revealed he's talking to Negan, locked up in a cell in Alexandria. Negan doesn't care about Rick's efforts to rebuild the community. He believes Rick is merely preparing the world for Negan's return to power. Anne keeps watch and notices a helicopter flying overhead. On his way back to Sanctuary, Justin, walking alone, encounters someone he recognizes before getting attacked. Episode 2 Construction on the bridge continues. As promised to Michonne, Maggie brings supplies from the hilltop to the sanctuary. She encounters a group of saviors looking for their missing member, Justin. Some saviors mockingly call Maggie the widow like Negan did, but Arat and Laura, the lead saviors, shut it down. Suddenly, Justin's reanimated body emerges from the woods, revealing he was killed by someone before turning. As news of Justin's murder spreads, tensions rise between the saviors and the other groups at the construction camp. Rick arrives and prevents immediate violence 
assuring the saviors they'll investigate. Rick questions his people to gather information. Gabriel, who was on watch with Anne but briefly stepped away, claims to have seen nothing. Gabriel later talks to Anne, who admits to seeing a helicopter but omits this detail when discussing it with Rick. She feels distrusted by the saviors, who called her the garbage lady and accused her of killing Justin. When Rick suggests Daryl might be responsible, Daryl denies his involvement. Rick forms teams to search for clues about Justin's killer. One team consists of Maggie and Cindy. They find walkers drawn to a house where a piece of sheet metal makes noise. Cindy reveals it was once an Oceanside residence before the saviors killed their men. While clearing the house, they almost get overwhelmed by walkers, but Rick, Daryl, and Reseda arrive in time to save them. They realize Arat and Beatrice, who were supposed to be at the cabin, are missing. They locate Beatrice knocked out and find Arat's belongings nearby. Back at camp, Rick and his trusted allies decide to split up and search again without the saviors. Rick and Carol encounter Jed and his group of saviors. Jed holds Carol hostage with a knife, demanding Rick surrender. However, Carol stabs Jed in the shoulder, allowing her and Rick to overpower the accomplice holding them hostage, and returns to the scavenger's junkyard and finds a hidden stash. She recovers a radio and makes a call for a helicopter pickup. The person on the other end asks if she has an aura B, but she doesn't have either. They tell her to be ready the next day only if she has an as the call ends. Anne spots Gabriel, who overheard the conversation. Gabriel realizes Anne traded people for supplies before, including plans involving Rick and him. Anne proposes that Gabriel helps her, and they could possibly join the unknown agent together. Gabriel refuses and intends to inform Rick, but Anne stops him. She reveals she once considered Gabriel a bee and knocks him unconscious. Daryl and Maggie discover walker bodies, one with a harpoon through it. They follow the trail back to a recovery center where Oceanside members, including Cindy and Beatrice, hold Eric captive. Cindy explains they're seeking revenge for their murdered husbands, sons, and brothers. She justifies their actions by referencing Maggie's decision to hang Gregory and reveals Eric was responsible for Cindy's brother's death. Cindy recalls Eret's heartless response, no exceptions. After hearing this, Maggie and Daryl turn away, allowing Cindy to execute Eret. The following day, most of the saviors head back to the sanctuary from the construction camp. Maggie and Daryl take a different route and Maggie tells Daryl that Rick's approach didn't succeed, so they need to change course and it's time to confront Negan. In Alexandria, Michonne takes charge of the community, raising Judith and drafting a new set of laws for the communities. At night, she fights off walkers and, on one occasion, temporarily loses her katana. She grabs a baseball bat as a substitute, which makes her contemplate Negan, imprisoned in Alexandria. Maggie, Daryl, and the Oceanside group plot to assassinate Negan. They know Rick won't allow Maggie into Alexandria due to her clear intentions, so they devise a plan to secretly bring her in without Rick's knowledge. Jesus, who has reservations about this plan, discreetly contacts Rick to give him a warning. Rick oversees the dismantling of the bridge construction camp since they won't finish it on time without the saviors. Eugene warns him about two large walker hordes, but they're not on their path. After hearing from Jesus, Rick decides to head to Alexandria. He contacts an Alexandria watch point to be on the lookout for Maggie, unaware that it's an Oceanside member involved in her plan. Rick plans to ride a horse, but Daryl insists on taking him on a motorcycle instead. Rick grows suspicious when Daryl purposely misses the Alexandria turnoff. They get into a fight and both fall into a deep pit beside the road. Realizing their conflict, Daryl reminds Rick of the people who supported him and the consequences of his decisions, like Glenn's death. They agree to work together to escape the pit. Meanwhile, Michonne visits Negan and discovers he's on a hunger strike. She brings him food and insists he eats while demanding that he engages in conversation. They discuss their respective losses, Negan's wife, Lucille, and Michonne's son, Andre. During a later visit, Negan asks about his baseball bat, Lucille, and Michonne claims it's still in the field, causing Negan great distress. At the scavenger's junkyard, Anne captures Gabriel and threatens to release an armless walker on him. Gabriel pleads for his release and apologizes for his past mistakes. Unable to kill him, Anne knocks him unconscious instead. When Gabriel wakes up, he finds himself alone in the junkyard with a note from Anne in his coat, explaining that she has departed to unknown destinations. At the construction camp, Jed and his group of saviors confront the remaining survivors, aiming their guns at them. Jed demands the survivors hand over their weapons for the saviors' protection against Oceanside. Carol puts down her weapon but attacks Jed when he approaches her. Gunfire erupts, and Rick and Daryl rush to escape. They struggle to climb out of a pit while walkers from an approaching horde fall in due to the gunfire. Despite the obstacles, both manage to escape. Rick spots a loose horse and decides to lead the walker horde away from the camp while Daryl goes to warn the others. While leading the horde, the unexpected convergence of another horde that Eugene warned about surprises Rick. The horse gets frightened by the two hordes and throws Rick off, causing him to land on a concrete block with rebar impaling his side. Unable to move, Rick loses consciousness as the two hordes close in on him. Rick has a dream of helicopters before waking up to find himself surrounded by walkers. Despite his severe bleeding from the impaling, he frees himself from the rebar and returns to his horse. In a barely conscious state, he leads the merged walker hordes away from the construction camp, finding an abandoned cabin to create makeshift bandages. Throughout his journey, Rick drifts in and out of consciousness, having lucid dreams involving his family and conversations with Shane and Herschel, who encourage him to stay awake and stay ahead of the horde. 
Anne, and Heath's stolen RV, tries to reach a planned rendezvous point but is confronted by the person on the other end of the walkie-talkie, who accuses her of deception. Anne assures them that she has the A they need and emphasizes the urgency of leaving the current location. Maggie continues towards Alexandria, but Michonne intercepts her before she reaches Negan's cell. Maggie persuades Michonne to hand over the keys, explaining that she can live with this decision. Negan taunts Maggie about killing Glenn, but she remains resolute. Negan pleads for Maggie to kill him so he can be with his wife, but Maggie suspects it's a trick. She briefly pulls Negan out of his cell to see his weakened state before returning him inside. Satisfied, Maggie gains a better understanding of why Rick spared Negan. Maggie and Michonne then hear reports of trouble outside and rush to investigate alongside other residents. In another vision, Rick encounters a field filled with the bodies of his friends, where he speaks to Sasha. She reminds him that his actions have been for the greater good and assures him that his family is not lost. Rick wakes up at the now-abandoned camp with the horse gone. Walkers, including Norris, Kathy, and others, approach him. Rick leads them toward the bridge, stumbling just short of it. However, Michonne arrives with a large group of allies to fight the walkers. She encourages Rick to keep fighting, and he realizes that his friends are his family. Recognizing it as another vision, Rick Rick finds himself alone near the bridge with the horde still following him. He gets back up and continues leading the walkers as the river rises. Disappointed that the weight of the walkers is not enough to destroy the bridge, Rick spots dynamite and uses it to detonate the bridge, eliminating most of the walkers. His allies believe he has perished in the explosion, causing them to mourn. And witnesses the smoke from the explosion and hears discussions over the walkie-talkies about Rick's presumed death. A helicopter lands nearby. And she spots Rick on the riverbank, alive but seriously wounded. Anne informs the pilot that she possesses a bee and successfully convinces them to rescue Rick. Both Anne and Rick are airlifted to undisclosed locations. Six years later, a small group consisting of Magna, Connie, Kelly, Yumiko, and Luke is fending off a horde of walkers when some of them are shot from a nearby forest. The group is instructed to take cover and soon discovers that they have been rescued by a protein Judith Grimes, who dons Carl's hat and wields Rick's revolver and Michonne's katana. Michonne narrates the survivors' ongoing efforts to rebuild and survive, six years after Rick Grimes' presumed demise. Judith leads Magna's group to Aaron, Eugene, Laura, and Rosita, who are initially skeptical about offering them protection. However, Judith insists on their inclusion. They journey to Alexandria, where Michonne returns from a scavenging expedition. Michonne assesses the situation and recognizes that Judith didn't follow the established procedure for admitting new survivors. Nevertheless, she allows them to stay overnight and arranges for their case to be heard the following morning in front of the council, which includes Laura, a former high-ranking savior now trusted within the community. At the kingdom, Ezekiel realizes the importance of having a skilled blacksmith for repairs and sends Henry to Hilltop to learn the trade. Carol accompanies Henry and brings supplies for Hilltop. On the way, they are ambushed by Jed and Regina, former saviors who have turned to marauding after the sanctuary's fall. They steal the supplies, including Ezekiel's ring given to Carol. That night, Carol sets fire to their camp, reclaiming her ring and avenging the theft. The next day, they meet up with Daryl, who now lives alone. In the morning, the council questions Magna's group, assessing their suitability as allies. While the other council members are satisfied with their answers, Michonne notices Magna's prison tattoo and hidden knife. Michonne demands an explanation, but Magna is unable to provide one. The council votes to expel them from the community after Yumiko receives medical treatment. Rosita and Eugene head to a water tower to set up radio equipment for Gabriel's communication efforts. They notice a large herd but believe it won't hinder their mission. While Eugene is on the tower, he spots the herd changing direction towards them. He startles their horses, and Rosita quickly grabs important supplies from their wagon. Eugene jumps down and injures his leg using a shovel as a makeshift crutch. Together, they escape. Judith, who has formed a bond with Negan, is frustrated with Michonne's lack of trust. Michonne reflects on her decision while caring for Rick Jr. Just as the group is about to be expelled, Michonne has a change of heart and decides they can stay at Hilltop. She personally escorts them, along with Siddick and former savior DJ, who will assist in Yumiko's recovery. As Eugene and Rosita hide in the woods, the herd continues to pursue them. Only when they cover themselves in mud in a wet ditch does the herd ignore their presence. They overhear faint whispers indicating that the herd is searching for them and getting closer. Tara discusses the day's activities with Jesus at the hilltop. She informs him that Maggie left with her son Herschel to join Georgie's group, leaving Jesus in charge. They also address the strained relationship between Hilltop and Alexandria. Later, Jesus meets Aaron in secret to practice combat and discuss how to rebuild trust between their communities. Suddenly, they spot a nearby flare and discover a wounded Rosita. They rush her back to Hilltop for medical treatment. Michonne, Siddick, and DJ accompany Magna's group to their former camp. They find the shelter, an appended shipping container damaged by a large herd. Luke, a former music teacher, retrieves his collection of musical instruments. Michonne intends to return to Alexandria, but Magna convinces her to stay and advocate for their group to Mac. They find refuge for the night in an abandoned building. Daryl brings Carol and Henry to his camp and introduces them to his dog, named Dog. Carol expresses concern for Daryl's health, but he has 
grown accustomed to living on his own during his search for Rick. While checking his traps with Dog, they encounter walkers and are saved by Henry. Back at camp, Henry shares his perspective on prioritizing everyone's survival over individuals. During the night, Luke scavenges in the abandoned building, which alerts Michonne. She slashes the object he found, revealing it to be a rare Stradivarius violin. Luke believes that art and music can help them overcome the walkers. They prepare to leave the next morning, but Siddick informs them that Maggie has already left Alexandria. Before they can make further plans, they realize they are surrounded by a walker horde. The group eliminates the walkers, including one of their own, Bernie, whom Michonne respectfully puts down. As they approach Hilltop, Two riders from Hilltop pass by, heading to Alexandria to update them on Reseda. The group, including Michonne, decides to proceed to Hilltop. Connie catches a glimpse of something in the woods but dismisses it later. Unbeknownst to them, someone is secretly observing their departure. They arrive at Hilltop and reunite with Daryl's group. Daryl receives news of Reseda's injury and Eugene's absence. Aaron, Daryl, and Jesus set off to search for Eugene. Daryl, Jesus, and Aaron track down Eugene. They come across a peculiar herd of walkers gathered in a field and decide to detour around it, finding it unusual. As they leave, a peculiar look Walker watches them from the herd. In Alexandria, Gabriel tries to console Negan, but Negan continues to provoke him. The riders from Hilltop arrive and inform Gabriel about Reseda's injury and her being taken to Hilltop. Later, Gabriel confronts Negan, expressing his frustration about having to stay and watch over him instead of tending to Reseda. Surprisingly, Negan shows genuine sympathy, but Gabriel dismisses it. Michonne, Siddick, and DJ escort Magna's group to Hilltop, where they face hostility. Tara informs them that Eugene is still missing and Aaron and Jesus are searching for him. Michonne and Siddick introduce Magna Magna's group to the Hilltop residents, including Carol. Michonne and Carol privately discuss the strained relationships between Alexandria, Hilltop, and the kingdom, making it challenging to maintain their past friendship and participate in an upcoming fair. Henry becomes an apprentice to Blacksmith Earl at Hilltop, while Carol returns to the kingdom and discovers Enid is in a relationship with Alden. Meanwhile, Reseda wakes up and warns Michonne and Tara about the threat she and Eugene encountered, expressing concerns about the safety of Daryl's group. Feeling down, Henry hangs out with a group of teenagers who invite him to a secret shelter outside the gates for some wild activity. After consuming a lot of moonshine whiskey, they show him a walker they've been toying with. Henry quickly kills it, causing the group to abandon him. When he returns alone, Tara and Earl place him in a cell for his drunken misbehavior. Earl, having made his own mistakes while drunk, sympathizes with Henry and promises to talk to Jesus on his behalf. Meanwhile, Negan discovers his cell door is unlocked and takes the opportunity to leave. Daryl's group leads the herd away and discovers Eugene hidden in a nearby barn. Eugene reveals that Reseda hid him there because of his knee injury and warns them about the unusual behavior of the herd, which has shown signs of intelligence and has been searching for him. They realize the herd is approaching the barn and quickly evacuate. Daryl offers to divert the herd while the others take Eugene to the hilltop. However, despite their efforts to distract the herd, it continues to follow them. Aaron, Eugene, and Jesus find themselves trapped in a walled cemetery. Michonne and others from the hilltop arrive to help rescue them, but Jesus decides to stay and fight. Unfortunately, he is fatally stabbed by a walker wearing a mask made from a walker's skin. Daryl eliminates the threat while the group deals with the remaining walkers. As they mourn Jesus' death, they hear whispers around them, preparing for an impending confrontation. Daryl, Michonne, and the group fend off the disguised humans in the cemetery, recovering Jesus' body and the mask. They encounter more disguised humans following them and lead them to a confrontation on a covered bridge. Two are killed, while a young woman surrenders and is taken as a prisoner to the hilltop. In Alexandria, Negan scavenges for supplies and takes a compass from Judith's room. Judith confronts him, warning him about the dangers outside the walls. She allows him to leave but keeps the compass, threatening to shoot him if she sees him again. Negan retraces his steps to the sanctuary, facing challenges along the way. Michonne's group returns to the hilltop where search parties had been organized to look for them. The threat of disguised humans is discussed, and the captured girl is questioned. Eugene's leg is treated in the infirmary while Reseda reveals to Hasidic that she might be pregnant with his child, overheard by Eugene. Negan discovers the abandoned sanctuary and attempts to live there briefly. Realizing there's nothing left for him, he kills walkers and leaves, riding a motorcycle back to Alexandria. The hilltop prepares to bury Jesus as Daryl interrogates the girl, Lydia, near Henry's cell. Daryl learns that Lydia's mother leads walkers against the communities. Lydia and Henry start getting to know each other, observed by Daryl. On his way back to Alexandria, Negan encounters Judith, who shoots at him but misses. Negan admits that he will willingly return to his cell. Alden and Luke follow you Miko's arrows and are led into a dense forest where humans in walker masks surround them. The humans reveal they set up the arrow trail and confront them with a sawed-off shotgun, declaring the end of the trail. At the hilltop, Lydia shares her backstory with Henry while they are both in prison. Unbeknownst to them, Daryl overhears their conversation. Lydia's flashbacks reveal her time in a Baltimore shelter with her unraveling father. Meanwhile, Tara leads Magna, Yumiko, Connie, and Kelly in search of Alden and Luke, aware of the threat posed by people wearing walker disguises like Lydia. They find the horses but decide it's too risky to continue and return to the hilltop. Magna's group debates defying orders to search for Luke, knowing it could affect their 
their acceptance at the hilltop. At the hilltop, Daryl pulls Henry aside, concerned about his growing connection with Lydia. Daryl continues talking to Lydia, trying to gather information about her group. Lydia reveals her mother's ruthless behavior and the abuse she endured. Daryl, having experienced similar abuse, sympathizes with Lydia. Lydia explains how her father was bitten while trying to protect her from a survivor her mother killed. This led them to adopt the walker masks for survival. Daryl eventually walks away, leaving Lydia to Tara's care. However, Henry believes Lydia is trying to confront her past and asks for Daryl's help. Daryl agrees, considering Carol's growth and overcoming her own abuse. Meanwhile, Magna's group hears walkers as they search for tracks. Magna suggests returning to the hilltop, but Kelly insists on finding Luke, to whom she has a personal connection. Connie chooses to stay with Kelly. Unbeknownst to them, a whisper observes their actions. Eventually, Magna and Yumiko return to the hilltop during daylight. Before dawn, Henry releases Lydia from her cell and shows her the safety and amenities of the hilltop. Despite having the opportunity to escape, Lydia panics when she hears a baby crying and asks to be returned to her cell. She asks Henry to stay with her overnight. The next morning, Daryl returns and Lydia admits that her mother won't come for her and she was gathering information for her. She reveals that her mother lied about her father's death, blaming Lydia for it. In reality, her mother killed Lydia's father while trying to escape. Lydia provides information about her mother's camp but warns that they frequently move around. On a guard post, Yumiko apologizes to Tara for leaving and Tara assures her that she sent a search party to find them. They witness the guards bringing back Kelly and Connie, but notice a group of whisperers approaching the hilltop. The guards protect Kelly and attempt to bring her inside, while Connie hides in the cornfield. Alpha. Lydia's mother, reveals herself at the front gate and demands the return of her daughter. In a flashback, Carol, Ezekiel, and Jerry gather in the woods to meet representatives from the hilltop and Alexandria for a trade. Jerry shares the news of his wife's pregnancy, and Jesus and Tara arrive with the trade goods. Jesus gives Ezekiel the charter of rights for the kingdom, and Ezekiel expresses his desire for all community leaders to sign it together. In the present, Ezekiel fondly looks at the charter in the kingdom. Alpha arrives at the hilltop and demands the return of her daughter Lydia. Daryl initially dismisses her demands, considering the hilltop's superior numbers. However, he realizes that Alpha has more allies and a large horde of walkers hidden nearby. Daryl confronts Alpha and refuses to give up Lydia, but his stance changes when he sees one of the whisperers holding a baby. Alpha offers to trade Alden and Luke for Lydia, and Daryl reluctantly agrees. At the kingdom, Ezekiel leads a scouting party to a nearby town to find a replacement projection bulb for the broken one in the movie theater. Despite the presence of walkers, they successfully retrieve the bulb in a poster display case. Ezekiel plans to use the display case to frame the signed charter of rights for the kingdom. Inside the hilltop, Daryl learns that Henry and Lydia have escaped. Addie and Enid set out to find them. During the standoff, the crying baby attracts walkers. Alpha shows no concern and expects the mother to abandon the baby. Alden and Luke plead for the baby's life, but Alpha refuses. The hilltop guards attempt to divert the walkers, but fail. Connie signals to Luke and manages to rescue the baby, escaping back to the hilltop with the help of Daryl, Kelly, Tammy, and Earl. Enid and Addie locate Henry and Lydia at an abandoned house near the hilltop. Enid encourages Henry not to let the hardships change him and reminds him of Carl's advice. Lydia chooses chooses to leave on her own, and the trade takes place, exchanging her for Alden and Luke. Lydia apologizes to her mother, but Alpha slaps her and asserts her authority. As they depart, Lydia smiles at Daryl. Connie hands over the rescued child to Earl and Tammy for care. Later that night, Henry sneaks out of the hilltop to find Lydia, leaving a note behind. Daryl learns about Henry's departure and intends to go after him, but Connie insists on joining him, sharing the same feelings as Henry. They both leave together. As Alpha leads her group back to camp, she interrogates Lydia about her time at the hilltop, but Lydia claims she learned little of interest. Henry catches up with the Whisperers and secretly observes them resting, but Beta discovers him and presents him to Alpha. Alpha questions Henry, who confesses that he came alone to rescue Lydia. Alpha decides to bring Henry with them. During the journey, Alpha asks Lydia why she didn't mention Henry, and Lydia lies, saying he wasn't worth mentioning, but Alpha reminds her of Henry's sacrifice. In Alexandria, Michonne clashes with Siddick and Gabriel on the council. She is upset about not being informed of Reseda and Eugene's radio tower mission. Gabriel points out Michonne's tendency to override decisions, including the decision for Alexandria to not participate in the kingdom's upcoming fair. Meanwhile, Reseda's pregnancy with Siddick's child progresses. Gabriel and Eugene both struggle with their feelings for Reseda. Eugene realizes he has little chance and advises Gabriel to continue pursuing Reseda as their love for each other is evident. Michonne visits Negan in his cell, and he claims to know about the community through gossip he hears outside. Negan tries to gain Michonne's trust. The Whisperers return to their camp, unaware that Daryl and Connie are tracking them. Alpha taunts Henry, explaining their walker disguises and the survival of the fittest mentality. Two Whisperers, Sean and Helen, question Alpha's decision to trade two people for her daughter. Alpha allows Sean to challenge her leadership, resulting in her decapitating Helen and fatally stabbing Sean. Alpha confides in Beta about Lydia and their plan to test her feelings for Henry. In a field, Whisperers lure a herd to devour Sean and Helen's bodies while Daryl and Connie observe. Michonne confronts Judith for talking to Negan, but 
Judith believes people can change, including Mishan herself. Reflecting on this, Mishan decides not to override a vote allowing Alexandria to participate in the fair, despite her reservation. She shares her decision with Aaron. Beta brings Henry to Alpha under the cover of darkness. Alpha challenges Lydia to kill Henry with a knife, threatening their lives if she refuses. As Lydia hesitates, a horde of walkers appears, attacking the unmasked whisperers. In the chaos, Alpha and her followers put on their masks to blend in with the herd. Daryl and Connie arrive, disguised as whisperers, and free Henry and Lydia. They escape together. Daryl, Connie, Henry, and Lydia escape from the pursuing whisperers. Beta vows to retrieve Lydia or turn their group into walkers. In the kingdom, Jerry informs Carol and Ezekiel about the ambush and robbery by the highwaymen. Carol suggests negotiating with them since they spared Jerry's group. Tara leads a search party, including Yumiko, Magna, Kelly, Tammy, and Earl to find Daryl's group while fighting walkers on their journey. In the morning, Connie leads Daryl's group to an unfinished high-rise where they can set up an ambush to isolate the whisperer. They debate whether to bring Lydia back with them, but Connie points out that she and Daryl have friends while Lydia has none. Ezekiel, Carol, and other kingdom members visit the highwaymen's base and set a trap to overpower them. Ezekiel proposes that the highwaymen help clear the roads for the fair and in return, they'll have access to the kingdom. Although the highwaymen initially refuse, Carol convinces them by promising a movie screening. They return the stolen gear and assist Tara's group in reaching the kingdom. Daryl locks Lydia in a closet with Dog while they prepare for Beta's group to arrive. When the group shows up, Daryl and Connie take advantage of their need to abandon the walkers on the ground floor, allowing them to eliminate them. Lydia breaks free from the closet just in time for Dog to save Henry from a Whisperer's attack, although Henry still gets injured. Daryl engages in a brutal one-on-one -on -one fight with Beta, ultimately pushing him into an open elevator shaft. While the Whisperers are under control, the group focuses on luring the walkers away from the ground floor to make their escape, unaware that Beta is still alive at the bottom of the shaft. In flashbacks, pregnant Mishan and Daryl search for Rick's traces but only find his revolver. Daryl explains his decision to live on his own, while Mishan returns to Alexandria. In present time, Mishan encounters her old friend Jocelyn among a group of strangers. Mishan vouches for Jocelyn and brings her to Alexandria for medical care. Jocelyn asks them to rescue the children she was protecting in a nearby building, and they succeed in doing so. Later that night, all the children, including Judith, gather around a bonfire. Jocelyn tells Mishan that all the adults in her group have died, and the children have become skilled hunters. The next morning, it is discovered that Jocelyn and the children have escaped, taking Judith and the others, along with food and supplies. Daryl teams up with Mishan to track them down. Mishan blames herself for trusting Jocelyn, but Daryl reassures her that it's not her fault. They eventually track down one of the children in a school and give chase, but they fall into a trap set by Jocelyn and the children. Later, Mishan and Daryl wake up tied and injured, realizing that Jocelyn has brainwashed the children to be violent and feral. They are branded with an iron X as a symbol of strength. Daryl helps them escape, and they split up to search for the captured Alexandria children who are held in a trailer. Mishan is attacked by one of the children who slashes her pregnant stomach. Despite the injuries, Mishan fights back and kills Jocelyn. She tries to persuade the children to return to Alexandria, but Mitchell, Jocelyn's second-in-command, orders them to kill the Alexandrians. Mishan is forced to fight and kill the children, except for one who surrenders peacefully. Mishan and Daryl bring the rescued children back to Alexandria. Afterward, Mishan decides to no longer allow strangers into Alexandria, causing tensions between Alexandria and the other communities to rise. Aaron informs Mishan that Daryl's group, including Connie, Henry, and Lydia, has arrived at the Alexandria gates. Daryl vouches for Lydia persuading Mishan to allow them to seek shelter. They stay briefly for Henry's medical treatment, but Mishan refuses to provide an escort to the kingdom. Later, Judith expresses her disappointment with Mishan's behavior to Daryl. That night, Daryl, Connie, Henry, and Lydia leave to return to the kingdom, with Mishan bidding them farewell. In the morning, Mishan discovers that Judith has left on her own, taking Rick's pistol. She confronts Negan, asking if he knows where Judith went. Instead, Negan points out that Judith is following Carl's vision for the communities and is upset with Mishan's reluctance to welcome others. Mishan sets off alone and eventually eventually catches up with Judith, who is surrounded by walkers. They fight off the walkers together, as Mishan tends to Judith's minor injuries. Judith reveals that she witnessed Mishan's actions in rescuing her from Jocelyn and her children, a fact that Mishan was unaware of. Judith expresses her belief that Mishan has lost love for their allies, but she went alone to help them. They embrace and reconcile. In Alexandria, at Carl's grave, Mishan tells Judith that they didn't want to bury another child. However, after the encounter with Jocelyn, Mishan chose to prioritize the safety of Alexandria's residents. Understanding Judith's concerns, Mishan agrees to help protect their allies. They set off on a horse-drawn carriage to catch up with Daryl's group and expedite their journey to the kingdom. Unbeknownst to them, two whisperers observe their arrival and plan to inform Alpha. At the kingdom's fair, Alpha launches an attack on a hilltop caravan headed to the kingdom. Daryl and Mishan arrive with Judith, Henry, Lydia, and Connie, reuniting with Carol and Ezekiel. Mishan gathers the community leaders to apologize, announce asylum for Lydia, and establish a mutual protection pact against the Whisperers. The leaders sign Mishan's charter, and a combined force prepares to secure the hilltop. During the fair, Alpha disguises herself as an Alexandria fairgoard to gather information. 
Earlier, Daryl's group joins the highwaymen en route to the hilltop. They learn about the hilltop residents killed by Alpha and split up to search for survivors. At night, Daryl, Michon, Carol, and Yumiko fend off walkers, only to be surrounded by the whispers. Beta appears and demands they surrender, claiming that the deal is off since they didn't hand over Lydia. That night, as the fairgoers gather for the film, Alpha sits next to Lydia and signals for her to stay quiet. Outside, Alpha tries to persuade Lydia to join her, but Lydia refuses. Alpha declares Lydia weak and no longer part of her group and leaves. At the whisperer's camp, Alpha reveals her true identity and approaches the captive Daryl and company. She assures Daryl that his friends are unharmed and warns him about crossing into her territory. At dawn, Alpha forces Daryl at gunpoint to a cliff overlooking a massive horde of walkers and whisperers below. She sets a boundary for her territory and threatens to release the horde if his people cross it again. Daryl inquires about Lydia, and Alpha admits she didn't kill her but doubts Daryl's ability to protect her. Defiant, Daryl asserts she's mistaken and leaves to reunite with his friends. In private, Alpha sheds tears over her daughter's loss but kills a whisperer who witnesses her vulnerability to maintain her facade of strength. As Daryl's group heads back to the kingdom, they discover a battered and bloodied Siddick tied to a tree. After freeing him, Siddick directs them to a nearby hill where a shocking sight awaits them. A row of ten decapitated heads, including Ozzy, Alec, DJ. Frankie, Tammy Rose, Rodney, Addy, Enid, Tara, and Henry, marking Alpha's territorial boundary. Back in the kingdom, Siddick addresses the community and shares the heartbreaking news. Instead of perpetuating fear, he recounts a different story. He honors the fallen by highlighting their bravery, how they fought as a united family until the end, protecting one another and taking down multiple whispers. Although they didn't prevail, Siddick wants them to be remembered as heroes. Later, Daryl and Lydia return to the border, where Lydia leaves Henry's necklace as a tribute. As they walk away, snow begins to fall. Months after the massacre, the king kingdom falls into disrepair due to damage and fires. Ezekiel leads the remaining survivors on a journey to seek refuge at the hilltop, broadcasting their situation on the radio. Daryl, Michon, and Yumiko assist in escorting them. They discuss the leadership situation at the hilltop, with Maggie choosing to stay away despite requests to return. While dealing with walkers, Ezekiel expresses his desire for a fresh start with Carol at the hilltop, asking if she feels the same. Meanwhile, Lydia contemplates suicide but is interrupted by Carol. They return to the group, and as a storm approaches, Michon decides to seek shelter at the abandoned sanctuary. However, supplies are scarce, so they devise a plan to cross into Whisperer territory and traverse a frozen river to reach safety quickly. At Alexandria, as the storm approaches and their solar power fails, Gabriel realizes they need to group up around fireplaces to stay warm. They decide to release Negan from his cell to prevent him from freezing. They take shelter in the church but discover the fireplace is blocked. They tie themselves together and venture through the blizzard to Aaron's house. During the journey, Judith chases after Dog and Negan follows, getting injured in the process. Negan finds Judith, who is suffering from hypothermia and carries her back to the group. The kingdom's group traverses Alpha's territory, encountering frozen walkers and reaching a frozen river. Carol searches for Lydia, who believes she's to blame for their situation and wants to leave. Carol refuses Lydia's request to be killed and encourages her to stay strong. The group reaches the hilltop and Carol informs Ezekiel that she plans to return to Alexandria with Daryl. They say their goodbyes and depart with a few others, leaving Ezekiel in charge. Daryl's group finally arrives in Alexandria after the storm passes. Michonne is thrilled to reunite with Judith and RJ. She visits Negan in the infirmary and expresses gratitude for saving Judah. Negan admires Michon's bravery for crossing through Whisperer's territory. Alpha and Beta discuss the need for strength in the face of what lies ahead. Following Alpha's request, Beta inflicts wounds on her arm, similar to what she used to do to Lydia. At the hilltop, Ezekiel talks with Judith over the radio, assuring her that leaving their house doesn't mean they've lost their home. They end the conversation and Ezekiel leaves the room. Suddenly, a faint transmission is picked up on the radio, and a woman's voice asks if anyone is there. 